In this video, I'll start rigging this flat character in Maya. I'll rig the body first and go over how we can use joints and set up animation controls. I think of these type of characters differently than your standard 3D characters and treat them more like drawings than 3D volumes. So I often rig them in a character pose instead of your typical T pose. And if there's an extreme pose change, then I may swap to separate rig. But in this case, I'll rig him in a T pose because he's so simple. I'll start by duplicating the body shape and I'm parenting it and then moving the T pose off to the side and hiding the arm so it's out of the way. Now that I'm thinking about where I'm gonna put the joints for the body, it looks like the resolution is a little bit sparse. So I wanna just add a few more rows. So I'll go back to my modeling menu, insert edge loops, and just add a couple more here. Okay, so I think that's a little bit better. Those extra rows should give me a little bit more control over the shape of the body now. Since I inserted more rows, I added more construction history to the object. So to clean it up, we can go ahead and say, edit, delete by type history, and that'll get rid of that information there. Or you could just duplicate the object and then the duplicate won't have the construction history. To create joints, you wanna be in the rigging menu. You go over to skeleton, say create joints. When you left click, it creates a joint. If you keep clicking, you continue to make joints in a hierarchy. When you're done, hit enter and it'll end the operation. If we go over to our outliner and shift click on that plus, it'll expand the whole hierarchy. And we can see that what we just created was what looks like a three joint chain, but it's actually four joints. The way I just created that chain was a little bit haphazard. I like to be cleaner than that. So I'll go to create joints, snap them to the grid and go to the attribute editor and check that the orientations are right and the translation values are clean. To make these joints longer, you can go ahead and just move them, but it's a little bit messy because I'm using X and Y to change that. What's worse is that if we go to the joint above it, we've now moved it off of its axis. So now Y axis is going straight up still, but it looks like it's at a 45 degree angle. So I wanna go back and make sure that I'm not using Y as well as X. If I really wanted a 45 degree angle, I would go back and do that with a joint orient. So then that axis still lines up with the joints. We'll keep this joint orient at 90 degrees and then I'll change these lengths in just X only so that they all have the same value. Now we're ready to bind the skin to the joints. So I'll open up the skin, bind skin menu. And these are the settings that I use. And I could use a joint hierarchy for this because it's a chain, but I'm just gonna leave it as selected joints. So to bind the skin, grab the joints, shift select the geometry and say apply. If I go to wireframe and pick a joint, you can see that the skin turns pink to show that it's being affected by the joints. And now if I move these joints around, they're driving the surface. You can use joint chains like this to rig if you want, but it's not really the way you see most rigs being done these days. So I'll show you how to do it with animation controls as well. So I'll duplicate the geometry and make another rig to the left. I used to think that a skeletal joint was something that looked like this, where it's basically this ball with a triangle that ends at another ball. But if you look in the hierarchy, that's actually two separate joints. So this joint is highlighted here, but if we step down, it picks the one up here now. So when you bind, you bind to the ball. The triangle doesn't mean anything. It's just a visual cue of the hierarchy. If I unparent this, that triangle goes away. Now I have two separate joints. If I parent it back, it recreates that triangle. So I'll make this rig with just those individual floating joints. Create joints, left click, hit enter. So I just create the one joint. I'll change the radius just to make it a little bit bigger and move it into place. Then duplicate and move them up the body. Pick the four joints in the body and bind skin. And if we move the joints, we can see how it affects the geometry much like it did with the joint chain over there. The only thing is that it's not in a hierarchy. So this might be a setup you wanna do for some of your pieces anyways. It's nice to have this sort of freedom of control. Now we'll set up the hierarchy with the animation controls. I like using NURB circles to create animation controls because they're light and they don't render and you can remodel them. And I tend to use a lot of animation controls so I like to have a few different shapes. So we can quickly make a square out of this circle as well as a triangle. So I'll keep these off to the side so we can use them as we go. And then I'll duplicate them and point snap them to the joints. And I'll just reshape them so that they're easy to pick, but they don't overlap too much. And be sure to freeze transform so we don't have any problems with scaling and rotations. I also wanna have a main body control down here. So I'll use a square so it looks different than the circle controls. Okay, so now we can make our hierarchy with our curves. This will be the pelvis, so I'll make it the child of the box. So if we move the box, the pelvis will go with it. And then this will be the spine all the way up into the head. So I'll make the spine a child of the box as well. And then I'm gonna make this upper spine a child of the lower spine, and then the head a child of the upper spine. 
Now that they've been grouped together, you can see we have a similar hierarchy to what we had with the joint chain on the right. So now we just need to connect these joints to those controls. We'll do that through parenting as well. So select the joint, shift pick the curve, hit P and that parents. So this part of the setup is complete. We can pick the body control, move it around, scale, rotate, everything follows along and we can walk down the hierarchy and get the different kinds of shapes that we want out of the rig. If we look at this in perspective, it's flat because I was shaping it from being in a front orthographic view, but it can be shaped in 3D space as well if we wanted to. Now I want to add a couple of line rigs to his body. I use it here to give his body a bit of dimension, but they can also be used as crease lines. I use this simple shape that's made of four-sided polygons in the middle and triangles on the end for that tapered look. And I'll rig it with many of the same techniques as the body. I'll create five individual skeleton joints, move them into place over the geometry, grab curves, move them up and snap them to the joints, scale them down, and grab a box that I can use as a top node for all those controls. I'll make all the controls a child of the box, grab the box, freeze transforms, and then make the joints a child of the corresponding curves. Now I can grab the joints, grab the skin, and bind it with the same settings as before. So the box moves everything around, and then the individual curve controls move underneath it, and they can be translated, rotated, and scaled up to create thick and thin lines. So now I'll group it to the rig, and I want to put this one under that pelvis control. But I'll make one additional group node above it so that it assumes all the translation information once I parent it in. And I'll just move it into place. That line rig is now under the pelvis, so if we move or rotate that around, that'll follow. And then we can reshape that line however we want. Before I move on, I just want to clean up the file a bit. There's some transform nodes that are left over from just grouping and ungrouping, so I'll delete those. I'll get rid of the T-pose, and I'll get rid of the character pose, and these leftover curves. All we're left with now is our rig and our two pieces of geometry for the body and that extra line. There are some display layers that I can also get rid of. The geometry's already been deleted out of these, but they still hang around. I'll delete it by going under layers, delete unused layers. And that clears out layers that don't have anything in them. Now we have our body rig, and we have our two pieces of geometry. If I expand that body control, that's our rig. Left outside of the rig is the two pieces of geometry for the body and that shape line. They can't be in the rig as well, otherwise you'll get a double transform. I'll show you what I mean and then I'll undo it. So if I accidentally put that into the rig and then move that body control, when I move it, the rig is affecting the geometry, but the geometry is also in the rig, so it's getting moved twice and that's a double transform. So a good way to manage all the geometry that's being bound to the rig is to group them under one node, title it do not touch, and lock them so you can't move it by accident. Now I want to create a visibility channel so we can turn on and off this line because we don't always need it. In the channel box we can see that these are the standard channels per object. But we can create our own channels. If you go to the attribute editor, go to add attribute, and it'll pop up a menu where you can name and make your own channels. So I'll name this bottom line. I'll change the min to zero, the max to one for an on off switch, and hit add. And if we go back to the channel box, it's added this extra attribute. And we can connect that to the visibility channel of the line rig using the connection editor. That's under Windows, General Editors, and there it is, Connection Editor. This interface has an output and an input. We had the body control picked, so it already filled that in. If we go down to the bottom of that, we can see through all the channels that are available, there's that one that we just added called bottom line. We select the bottom line attribute on the left, and then we select the line rig and say reload on the top right to load that in. Go down to the visibility channel and select that. That will now create a connection between the bottom line attribute and the visibility channel of the line rig. If you look in the channel box, that attribute now has a yellow indicator that that channel is being driven by something else. And now we can use that channel on the body control to turn on and off the line whenever we'd like. And now do the same thing for the geometry itself. And there we go. And after repeating the same process to create an additional line for the top of his head and one for the middle of his body, the body rig is now complete. Once this was rigged, I put it through a little animation test, just kind of some range of motion to test out the shapers, see if I was going to have the control and get the look that I wanted out of the rig. It's definitely simple, but it works for this character. So that's it for the body rig. In the next video, I'll go over how to rig the legs.